I mean, um, I understand almost anything. Uh, that's it, the beginning. If you give me a pattern, I know it's an introduction. It's not just a local pattern, it's kind of an introduction. It's slow, back and forth. Uh, you create expectation. So I should, first of all, wait until everybody is really quiet. <laughs> and then I'm looking forward to what happens next. And um, of course, it's about accumulation of elements, pitches, instruments, gestures. Um, and um, yeah, that's what I know, let's say, after two hours. And then I have to wait. And of course, I know you want me to wait, yeah, to get stuck with my knowledge, yeah, to listen to the material again, to appreciate the stuff, and not just my abstract expectation. Um, that's why you insist on the patterns, uh, which is in itself a quite conventional strategy. Uh, it's a minimalistic strategy. You know, you know in that. Um, so I don't start really to appreciate the repetitions because I know I should fall back to the concrete stuff after knowing how it's uh, uh, disposed from me and, and uh, let's say monitor and so on. I, I understand what's going on. I uh, have to wait. I should go back to the material let's say, sensations. Um, and the whole concept is in terms of convention, it's, it's, it's assured. I'm, I'm not let's say, irritated, you, know, you don't uh, interrupt the, the things which I uh, conceptually already understood. So that's why I feel safe and I ask myself, why should I, I, I feel myself safe? Yeah, I, I, I'm looking for um, something unexpected and you bring it by uh, deleting some notes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any Mozart, Eric May, Beethoven is usually about speculation. Um, we get confronted with different material and we don't know how to integrate it. And the longer the more we understand lots of strategies, how to make them somehow uh, link, you know, uh, somehow referring to each other in a very indirect way. But uh, all of this web of relations is built on the fly. Given as a certain uh, repertoire of techniques, um, even if we know more and more about those formal conventions, we still, I mean, how many good analysis do you know of, uh, of Beethoven's notes? Very, very few. It's almost nothing. You know? Everybody knows Beethoven. In fact, we hardly can explain what's going on. There are some really intelligent approaches, but uh, you almost don't have, uh, let's say, ambitious. Just in any case, that's a process, even a long-term process in musicology. <laughs> yeah. And the opposite is, I'm sitting here and I know what's going on. Just to have a very sharp uh, opposition built up now uh, uh, as a subject. Um, if you were asked what to change in this piece, what would you change? What didn't, let's say, match your expectations? Because I think it's very close to what you wanted. Uh, I ask myself if there is any section which you would, let's say, conceive as um, a certain step in a, in a global process. Yeah? You would rewrite it in a different way or you would simply drop it or rearrange it or something like that. Is there any, let's say, not just in terms of optimization, in, in terms of relativization of what, what was going on. Is there something like that in the piece or it's... Well, actually, that part that was your favorite. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would change significantly, I think, um, rather than deleting the same notes and then deleting more of them, right. I would probably revisit it and, uh, uh, you know, rather than having the, you know, first, second, fourth, sixth, and eighth, mm -hmm. eighth notes mm -hmm. yeah. remain the other next time, take out the first one, next time we do the first one, etc. Um, I don't know, it's, this was originally 
case of the of the forty minute long piece, so it okay. refers back to things like that you guys have to play. Of course, and I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so those kind of take on a different, or you know, like uh, those kind of big piano chords that show up um, maybe two thirds of the way through the piece are uh, reminiscent of a and third movement okay. that, you know, lacks gravity when you extract this. Absolutely, probably. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, I see it. Um, so if I was, you know, treating this purely as a standalone piece, I might not even have that section in there. Or <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's nice. yeah. Of course, you lose, let's say, uh, dislocation. Yeah? If you isolate uh, this piece from, from, from all those contexts, of course, it's difficult to, to estimate the speculative global uh, uh, process. Yeah? Maybe that, that's the case, I, I don't know, of course. But still then, um, listening to the isolated piece, you, you would never let it play like this? It's just for the workshop, or you would conceive it as an angry tool itself, as a standalone object? No, I mean, it was really written as part of the bigger piece. Okay. So would, it's just, I wouldn't object if you wanted to play it again. <laughs> <laughs> Today is the closing program of an intense, intense workshop week. We had Hans Peter Kimbus here, who worked one week with young composers from New Zealand and from other countries. And this year we are happy to have Hans Peter Kimbus here, who is born in Lagos and who is Swiss and works in Berlin. <laughs> and uh, my, I want to say, say thank you to the Swiss, uh, Swiss Nix Consulate, to our friend Andreas Hofer, to support this program, this networking, and a wonderful reception afterwards. Yeah, Hans Peter Kibbutz is uh, working in Berlin, and uh, he's a wonderful teacher. Uh, Sometimes during the week I was listening to him more. And uh, um, he is uh, not only a composer, he's all also deep in philosophy and art history and in political philosophy. He is uh, somehow not only a musician, but also, also a dancer. A dancer in, uh, in the Balinese sense. <laughs> this means uh, by dancing he is conducting, yeah, which only happens in Bali also in So we know that he spent a month in Indonesia. I'm happy to have him here and uh, Behind this is a close cooperation with the group Ecke, uh, Ecke, I'm sorry, uh, East Coast Contemporary, oh, I forgot again, uh, East Coast Contemporary Ensemble. Ensemble. It's not only an ensemble, it's a whole community uh, which is uh, giving concerts, but it's also uh, developing formats to outreach uh, and to find uh, new audiences for new music and which is I think very successful. Uh, you hear me? Okay. Yes, yeah. Um, this is uh, the Camorilla uh, of uh, Donatello. Um, I wanted to show you uh, this piece just because it's one of the first pieces uh, dealing with the uh, central uh, uh, perspective and at the same time the independent of movement within this frame. So it's the polarization of what's going on with the putti behind the columns and the rhythm of the putti in the front. This separation was uh, absolutely new, nobody did it before. And I was interested in that kind of movement behind the columns, how to measure it. I don't uh, talk about, let's say, how many centimeters they are running or coming, how to measure it, all those correspondences. Arms and legs. It's quite difficult to talk about these things. And reading uh, art history papers, I didn't find anything about the movement together. So it's a terminological problem as well as a conceptual problem. Another example. Moving people. 